show in the country. The Steve and Nolan Show. Hi. Right. Go get him, Stephen. Batman rides again. I heard you sang at the beginning of the program. <laughs> No, it wasn't the beginning of the programme, it was the ending of the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you, have no, you have no sympathy for people. That's a travel mode, Bernice. That's a song called Dirty World. Uh, good man, Nolan. Nolan, you have no sympathy for the people out there. People out there are desperate. I mean, if you were a normal human being and had a bank account instead of stuffing all your money in your mattress, you would understand the pain and the tribulations that people are going through. Nolan is doing the best he can. He's down there, battering on the door, getting those guys out there. You know, fair play to him, I say. You just don't care. You have no heart in you. Sorry, I just thought I had to say that to you. Good morning. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme, I see you're no, no reply, you're speechless. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555 678. Email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and the text messaging service is 81771. Did you see some... the Paul Simon's show last night? I did, I thought it was excellent. One of the best programmes I think I've ever seen. Excellent, wasn't it? Yes, it was about Graceland, 25 years on. It's incredible. I was going to go to that concert next Friday night, but... Uh, I can't get my money out of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> They're putting on an extra show. Are they? Yeah. When? Um, well, what what night is it? The day Friday, after, Friday the thirteenth. Uh, well, it's on. I think it must be on. The Sun- next, there's, an extra, as well? there's an extra show. Anyway, that's all I know. Are you serious? Yeah, it was advertising television last night. Are you serious? Yes. I uh, know. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm saying, are you serious? I'm not accusing you of lying. I'm just saying, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Because I mean, I, I decided not to go because it was Friday the thirteenth. You know, it interfered with the twelfth, and uh, so I could go on Saturday, couldn't I? You could. Couldn't I? Uh. If I had the money. Yeah. So it's an extra show. <laughs> uh, here's a person who's uh, uh, given does, test. Does he, does he wear an Irish? The old no, he doesn't. Very bad hair. Paul Simon, he's... Yeah. he's, he's I think aged. he did at one time. I, I, I don't think he did, you know, really. Uh, I think he aged badly. Uh, many of us do. I notice you aging disgracefully. Mm-hmm. Some of us age well, like, you know, I'm, I'm not like the oldest. I, I yeah. age gracefully. But some of us don't. And, and it's... It's beyond us. It's in our genes. Some of us look fine when they're 40, and then when you get to 50, you know, just suddenly something bad happens. And yeah. then others escape. There's no legislation for it. But poor Paul I Simon, think he wore a wig at one time. He may have done, I but I don't, I don't think so. Because one of the press conferences that he was given, you could see the old, you know, the telltale sign sticking out the back? The old Irish. You know, at the back. Uh, so. Speaking of music, a gentleman writes to me. Did you see a documentary called the, I think it was called The Six Million Dollar Con or Swindle or... Fraud. No, I didn't see that. Didn't see that. The no. guy who pretended to be one of the uh, Rockefellers. Mm-hmm. Very good. Do we have to go into this now? I'm just wondering. Just, just okay. Look, 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 okay. I'm sitting having a cup of tea with you. You know, basically, you know, although we don't have tea and we're in different rooms. And we have no cups. And we have no, no, no. So I'm just sort of sitting, you know. It's all right. I'm, 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 I'm talking to you. You're the guy on the bus. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking to you. I know, but... I'm the unfriendly guy in the bus. Uh, obviously. Yeah, I see that. Heard you and Sean discussing pronunciation of words on your show uh, the other morning. Just as so happened, this email arrived from a friend today. I thought, uh, maybe the lads would like this. It's apropos what's going on at the moment. Uh, Nolan down battering at the door of the Ulster Bank. Gentleman says, I was at my bank today. There was a short queue. Uh, there was just one lady in front of me, an Asian lady, who was trying to exchange yen for dollars. It was obviously she was a little irritated. She said to the teller, why you write change? Yesterday I got two hundred dollars for yen. To today I only got hundred and eighty. Why? Why rate change? The teller shrugged his shoulders and said, "Fluctuations." The Asian lady said, "I'm the same to you, white people." <laughs> 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 very good. You didn't see that coming, did no, you? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> and, and, and I like the way you said it very quickly and moved on. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I have absolutely no, a gentleman writes and he said I have absolutely no. you see the Ulster Bank you see in the paper the other day and this seems to be beyond uh, reproach apparently uh, the Ulster Bank were on uh, Radio Ulster yesterday yeah they taking, talked to everybody take, except take, Nolan taking calls they were answering they, were, they, they talk were to Nolan yesterday yeah. Yeah, but you see that's what annoys Nolan see they talk, there was a very good They're man they talk back there was a very good man on yesterday talk yes. back explained what happened yes and apparently I don't know if he said this or not but apparently there's been outsourcing IT outsourcing to India which could be one of the reasons because, uh, you know, it's saving some money. I hope they don't, they're not using the guy that I rang with the laptop. No. <laughs> uh, hello? Uh, hello? Hel- what? No, sorry. Hello. Uh, I've got this bank book here and uh, it doesn't seem to work. Brilliant. Tell you what. Take the bank book, open it, and close it. Is that okay now? 
Uh, no, it doesn't seem to have any effect. The writing is still the same on it. But when I go to the bank, they won't give me any money. Brilliant. Wonderful. Right. What is your name? Anderson. Henderson. Anderson. Where do you live? Northern Ireland. Where that? You see, it doesn't go on forever. Anyway, I've absolutely no idea as to why you're determined to play the same musical nonsense on a daily basis. This is from a listener. It's a criticism of the musical policy in this show. And I have to say there is no musical policy on the show. The only musical policy I am aware of is that I like to play things that I like. And it's probably not the best way. I mean, Hugo doesn't that, doesn't do that. Everyone tries to please the listeners, but I, I try not to deliberately do that because I know what the listeners like. The listeners like, you know, shine, flash your lights at me and stuff like that, but I can't play that. Having listened to your radio show over the years, it is disappointing that you appear to have lost all concept of what music your listeners want to hear. Unfortunately, you're appearing to slip into the same annoying category as Hugo, who's like dental pain in people's ears. What a cruel thing to say. As a licensed player, all I ask is that you review your music. Sean, will you do that? Will you we've, review the music for me? We've been trying to do that for... <laughs> I'll not say how many years, but... Yeah. You don't ah. listen. You just don't listen. Although I must say, uh, uh, mm? I got a shock this morning. If that's what the right word. Uh, yes, I, I yeah. think. Did I hear you play a new Pygmy CD? Or new? Pygmy? Yes, I. No, I. No, it was another thing entirely. It's. I said, "Oh my God! Don't tell me he's got another CD." Have you? Have you? No, there's more pygmies coming. Is that what you're saying to yourself? Aye. You were alarmed at it. Uh, but, no, no, no. I don't think. But can uh, I say this to you? Yes. When I, when I was uh, eavesdropping. Uh huh. It, it sounded all right. It sounded fine. It sounded okay. Oh, I'm keeping that in reserve. I'm keeping that. Are you playing it this morning? Not this morning, no. Why not? I'm going to listen to it more carefully. I didn't have time to analyze it this morning. It may get bad in the middle. You know, sometimes you play stuff and it gets bad in the middle. You have to reach the middle. I hadn't time to listen to the whole thing. I'm going to listen to the whole thing today and then maybe perhaps uh, uh, spring it on the unsuspecting listeners tomorrow. Uh, You'll be cautious now because you know I like it. No, I won't play it now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A quick review of the papers. Uh, I see that uh, Peter Crouch, uh, uh, England uh, footballer, is going to have a chat show on Sky, I do believe it is. I'm not quite. Maybe it is Sky or maybe Sky? it's Atlantic. Sky. Isn't no, it's Sky. Sky. Okay. It's going to be called On the Couch with Crouch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you see what it says in the paper? It says he should be very good at it because he's got a good command of the English language. That's amazing yeah. from an English person. Isn't it? <laughs> a large sum of money has been found at the Asda store on the Shore Road. Any information, please contact the show. The money has now been handed into the police, so if anyone rings, they must get in contact or go to the police station themselves. We're going to get an update on Geordie this morning. Are we? Yes, we're th- apparently we're talking to you fancy some, some stage. A gentleman sent me photographs of Geordie in his hospital bed. I have four photographs. I showed them to you this morning. And uh, I feel as if he has aged... We've lost him. ...since he stopped drinking. Oh, you know no. some, I feel as if he No, has. don't say I'm that. Geordie, don't listen to him, Geordie. Geordie was listening to the wee programme yesterday. Was he? Yes. To your programme? Yes. That's evidence that he's not well. He's listening to me now. I'm about to say, oh, oh, oh. Uh-huh. I don't know what to say to that. I'm playing Pecker Dunn for him today. Ah, you see, you always do things that the people want. That's why you're popular. My husband and I, says Jenny, made a happy decision to move to Northern Ireland from London in the year 1999. I'm originally from Belfast and my husband is a Londoner. We found a lovely old house which needed a lot of attention and have spent the years since our arrival giving our new home lots of tender loving care. I listen to your radio programme regularly. Your relationship with Sean Coyle is inspired on a winning formula, except that I don't like him. I just added that bit. It's such a delight to benefit from an intelligent, warm, literate, witty and kind programme. Uh, my reason for wit- writing to you is to ask for your advice, someone who has a, an eclectic taste and knowledge in music. We have a collection of vinyl records collected over the past 40 years. In case we pop our clogs anytime soon, we have embarked on a house streamlining exercise. Can you suggest a not too arduous method of disposing of our record collection? We have considered eBay too much messing about. Financial gain? Nah, not a priority. I understand there are people out there with an interest in vinyl. So she sends me a list of all the original vinyl records that she has. I'm just looking down these. Uh, and some of them are quite good. She's got an original copy of... Uh, of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles with complete with the original sleeve in, inserts. And she's got a whole list of stuff. Uh, all the James Young stuff, all Simon Garfunkel, all from the 60s. There's one, two, three different uh, three pages. So anyone who's interested in old vinyl and there's any particular uh, LP that they would like, give us a ring. 08459. No! No! Don't do that. Give us a ring. Why? 08459. What, what, what are we doing? 
uh, and asked we'll send a copy of the uh, we'll send a copy of the list of uh, records that the person has for sale or whatever. What? We'll send a copy no, of the list. No, no. Well, uh, I'm the presenter, and I feel as if uh, this is what I should do. What, 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 what are we going to? What? No, stop it. I'm not stopping it. I, it's already done. Anyone who's interested in some old vinyl uh, LPs oh, that you may have looked for for many a year. This is becoming a swap shop. We I can't know. do that. What, what People will ring here and say, have you got the Beatles? Yeah. Or have you got the Rolling yeah, Stones? Yeah. And then I've, I've, I've got to check the list. Yes, yes. And then, got his, and then what? Yes. And then so, I, I sit here and look at you. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm going to make you work. No. Creedence Clearwater Revival, Terry hits Louis. album. Diana Ross, Greatest Hits. Don McLean, American Pie. James Young, The Young Ulster Man. Emerald Gem, Joan Baez, Farewell Angelina, Judy Collins, Both Sides Now, Status Quo, 12 Gold Bars, The Beatles, Please Please Me, uh, The Dubliners, Drinking and Wenching, The Police, Regatta de Blanc. No. Oh, that, look at that wonderful, and all classical music as well, Philharmonic Orchestra, conducted by Rudolf Schwartz. We'll put them through to you. James Galway, Mozart, and the New Irish Chamber Orchestra. James Galway, The Magic Flirt. The Magic Flirt. It's Zach Perlman, popular violin, repertoire, all on vinyl, all available. There we are. That'll, that'll fill your day today. <laughs> As you had no backyard. <clears throat> yes. Right? Yes. In your house, you had no backyard. We had no backyard. No, right. No. Therefore, did you not have a mangle? We had a mangle. Well, what, what, did, what did you do with we the water? We kept the mangle in what? the first floor. We had a little kind of recce place. And what did you do with the water? We had a system of, of drainage. Uh, the, I can't remember how it actually worked, yeah. but the, the system did work. And it was called, the system, I'll tell you what the system is. <laughs> the system is a big basin. Underneath the mangle? That's, that's it. That's the way it works. There's ah. a little spillage, a little splashage. Ah. There's no such word as splashage, but there should be. But there should be, it's a good word. Aye. Splashage. Yeah. So, the See, big our, our mangle was in the backyard. Yes, this is great. And I know you want to talk about your mangle, but no, I feel I as if maybe I don't, it's, I don't, I just... this talk is premature. Uh, we've been asked to do some uh, impersonations. Uh, oh, I don't know. There's Janet. I don't what? know. I don't know. There's Janet. Janet's quite late today. No, Janet was at the dentist. Oh, was she? Yes. Did she have an extraction? I don't know, did you? Mm, ask her. Did you? Antibiotics. Mm. Antibiotics. Antibiotics. That's what oh. you had last week. It's spreading. Mm-hmm. I didn't drink for a whole week. Mm. I, didn't, I don't like the world the way it is. Anyway, a uh, gentleman says uh, there was a movie a long time ago called Shane, right? Uh, starring Alan Ladd and Jack Palance. And there was a very famous scene in the middle of that, when Jack Palance is this evil, evil, black-clad uh, gunslinger, and he's in this horribly mud-spattered town in the West, and he's brought in to kill people. He's, he's brought in to kind of sort out the sodbusters who are, are working the land, and the cattle ranger wants them off so he can graze his cattle. So he's decided to make an example of a little sodbuster who comes into town. And we did this before, but this, one wants, this man wants another angle on it. So people who didn't see the movie, Jack Palance is standing up. I the, didn't see it. Oh, you did see it. Didn't. Well, I'll explain it for yeah, you. Yeah, please do. There's a rickety kind of saloon, and uh, and there's a porch there, and he sits out on the saloon. You see, on this chair, and you can see right down below him. There's a street, and the street's all mud and horrible. So he sees a sodbuster coming in with a little mule, and the the man is not riding the mule. He's trading through the treading through the muck, right. uh, pulling the mule behind him. Right. So, uh, Jack Palance gets up and challenges him. Why? See? Why? He says something to him, I can't remember what it is. But at the end of it all, what he wants to do, he wants to kill the guy. But he wants the guy to fire at him first. So what he does is, he, he takes, oh, he's got two guns, he takes one gun out of his holster and he throws it down. Right? Right. Throws it down. And the sodbuster says, I don't want no trouble, mister. I just come into town to buy some king for my wife and some rock candy for my kids. Jack Palance goes, pick up the gun. I don't want no trouble, Mr. I got a wife and family at home. I just came into town for some gingham, some rock candy. For Pick up the gun. Pick it up. So eventually, you know what happens? The wee man, the wee sodbusters, out of control, and he feels as if he has to make a lunge for the gun. So he lunges for the gun, and Jack Palance kills him. And it's the first time you actually see a fella being really hit by a bullet. He's jerked back, and he falls Aww. into the mud, and he's dead. Aww. And Jack Palance says, there's people standing around watching. He says, you saw that, didn't you? He pulled a gun. You saw that, it. didn't you? He pulled a gun. You saw that, didn't you? He pulled a gun. Yeah. That's it. But the, right. the key thing is, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. So I'm dying playing that part. But the, 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 the person wants you to play the part of the sodbuster. 
And all yeah, I get shot. Out. Yes. Uh, you have to play the part of the sodbuster, but the thing is, the, the sodbuster is Roy Walker. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, then. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing in town? I just come in for some for some vittles, and I come in to buy the, the Daily Mirror. What do you want? What do you want to do? Well, I just came in for the Daily Mirror and a pint of milk and some bread, some gingham for the, and candy for the kid. Gingham for the wife, rock candy for the kid. Yeah, that's what I said. No, you didn't. What did I say? Say it again. I just came in to buy some gingham for the wife and rock candy for the kid. What's gingham? Gingham's a, a, a material. For making skirts and frocks. Yeah, and making tablecloths. Jack Palance pulls out his gun. He throws it down. You have to say, what's that? What's that, mister? It's a gun. A gun? I, d I know nothing about guns, mister. Pick it up. No, I don't. Look, look, listen, mister. I just came in here to buy the Daily Mirror Pick and a pint of milk and some Pick bread. Up. Pick up the gun. Look, mister, I'm not that type of fella. I, Pick up the gun. I, I want no truck with you, mister. Pick up the gun. Why don't you just leave me alone? Pick it up. I just, I just want to get some candy for the kid. Go home. So gang him for a while. The kid. Pick it up. I don't want to pick up the gun. I don't like guns, mister. Leave me alone. I'm just an honest farmer. Back in class. <laughs> ah! Jeez. You saw that? He picked up the gun. Are you dead? You hurt me. Have you gone through the M square? Right through my chest. That's Gretchen Peters and uh, Rodney Crowell. And if I could find the sleeve of the record, I could tell you that was called, but I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. No, it's not. It's another one entirely. I'll find it in a moment, and then I'll tell you what it is. Uh, apparently, you left out one of the best lines in that scene. I, I, uh, a gentleman phoned in to say that uh, apparently Roy Walker, is it Roy Walker, says to, yes. says to Jack Palance, you're a dirty, rotten Yankee liar. That's right. That's right. So where'd, how, how did that come about? You're dirty, rotten Yankee. Liar. And why did I? Why did Roy Walker say that? I can't remember why. Uh, I would You're need to a dirty, rotten that. Yankee liar, Mister. Dirty, rotten Yankee liar, Mister. Hmm? I don't know why that. I, I can't remember. And then the Jack Palance. Time. Janet says. Then Jack Palance says, "Prove it. That, prove it. <laughs> prove it. Prove it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I must look. I should have. I just did that off the top of my head. I, should, I didn't do the research. I'm sorry, Sean. I should have watched it on YouTube. But then again, you see, I don't have time. There's it's a so, man wants you on one. I'm so busy with my charity work. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Yes, good right. How are you, sir? Not too bad. Uh, I heard you a while ago giving out of the racket, so I wanted to just have a please. Sorry? What was that? There was a wee bit of a, a, a pip there. What was? What did you say, sir? Uh, I was wondering, the racket you were on about uh, earlier, could you send them out to me, please? I could send you out a list, yeah, I suppose, yeah, and if you're interested, you can contact the people. Right. Sean, could you not handle this? No, I don't know. I, I know nothing. I don't know the list. I don't know I, anything. I Sean, you know something about them. I know nothing about it. Oh, so in other words, anyone who rings up about this, mm -hmm. you're going to put them on to me. Why don't you just say to the people who what ring up that we have a list here, and they're welcome to a copy of it. What? Why don't you just say that? Or well, I could say that on the air to prevent the people listening. Apparently there's an email address. There is an email well, address. Well, you're to give that. Why don't you give Eugene the email address? There isn't. No, there is not an email address. No, Janet I, says there is. How does she know she's never seen any of this? Okay. How does she know that? It came in on the text. It did, did not come in on the text. Well, Janet said it did. It did not come in. in oh, did it? This is a new text, then, that I haven't seen. I'm terribly sorry. Okay, what is the email address? I don't know. <laughs> We're here. Stall, stall, stall. Here. Is that a there? The people, might want, the people may not want their email no, address. No, that's right. That's, know. May not want their email address given out. I'll tell you what. Hi, Chang, you're just, uh, no, oh, I would be interested. This person's interested. Ah, you see, you, see, that, you don't that, know, do you? No, it's all right. Yeah. It should read the things until the end, and mm. then you'll know what they mean. So, will you help Eugene? I help Eugene. Will you, will you make a note of Eugene's uh, details and then no. you can send Eugene? I have Eugene. He's refused to send no. you the relevant uh, details. I have Eugene. Eugene's telephone number. Well, why don't you contact Eugene after the program when I'm off doing God's work, and then you can uh, fill uh, him what? in on what is going on. But Eugene wants the records. I know, but he, said, tell him we'll send him a list, and then you can send him a list. Is that what you want, Eugene? That's right. I want That's the right, records. Yeah. Yeah. You want the records? Yes. Please. He wants the, the list of the records. You want the list of the records, or do you want the records? I want the records, please. Yeah, but you see, you can't have them all. Why not? Because. Is that person selling them? I'm not quite sure. Let me just check this. 
Are you willing to buy these, Eugene? Yes, I am with the right money. Yes. With the right money. There you are. All right. Now, so okay. what's the, what's what? Will you stop? What's what the deal? Sh- what I don't know. What Eugene, the deal is. Eugene's interested in okay. the in the final. He wants to buy them. Right. I'll tell you what to do. Why don't I give Eugene the address of the people or the email of the people who are selling it, and then he can contact them themselves. Yes. Well, why don't you ring Eugene after the programme? Yeah, he'll do that. He'll ring you after the programme, Eugene. Thank you very much indeed. See, all you have to do is that. It seems simple to me. It doesn't seem too complicated. Uh, Janet's telling me now she's taking a call now as we speak. It's, yes? It's the gentleman who sent you in the list of albums, vinyl. Yes, yes. He's mm. looking for them. Oh, he's looking for them? He's not looking for That's them. That's what Janet said. Yes. No. He rang him. This man rang him. This man rang you. And talk to you. And what? Did he what, talk to you? What are you talking about? Is it Lexi? No, no. No, <laughs> this you... man rang you. Yes. And? He said he, he wants those records. Yes. So? He hasn't got them. He hasn't got them. What, so he only rang me. When did he ring me? When did he ring him? When I sent him a text. Hmm? Well. He sent you in a text. <laughs> <When did laughs> Janice has been to the dentist. I know, but she always even. talks like that even when she doesn't go to the dentist. Right. So when, there's, when there's some, you've a, created what, what, some what do you mean he sent me a text? You have created some confusion. You've got the wrong end of the stick here. Yes, yes. Here, right, here, here we are now. Here we are. Well, go, can you go to two and try and clear this up? Hello, good morning. Hello. Who's this? Hello, my name is Ben Allen. Yes. A funny thing happened to me this morning. Yes. Someone rang me and said someone's offered a big record collection. Yes. And the woman says she's just back from the dentist. And she says, here's an email. This guy called Lexi Davison. Excuse me a second. <laughs> this woman who rang him, who was just back from the dentist, yes. I do believe could well be Janet. It is Janet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, right. So, so where are we in the story? I don't know. Now, go ahead, sorry. She gave me this guy's address. His yes. email address. So yes. I said, I, I, I was on the, on the radio. I was on the... Uh, someone rang me and told me about this. Yes. And... Your friend who was at the dentist gave me Lexi Davison's email. Why would she do that? Because he was supposed to be offering this record collection. But it's not him. But it's not him. Apparently, it's it's a woman. I have heard from yeah. my friend who was actually listening to your show and said that it was a woman who moved back from London. That's right. And she was offering a big record collection of, of 60s I records. think I, I think I said that. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Janet... Uh, has, had, has Janet had any drugs at all? Gas yeah. and air. Gas and air. I'm sorry about the confusion, so I'm sorry we've raised your hopes unnecessarily, <laughs> and I'm sorry we've put you down the wrong road. But you see, you can't get the staff these days. Well, you so, know what's really bizarre? Yes. I was just about to send an email. I had the, you know, like the new email open at the top, and just down my emails it said, do you have received a payment from Lexi Davison? <laughs> and he'd actually bought records off me. Is that a fact? Okay, this is unbelievable. Oh, my God. You see, <laughs> just goes to show you there's a strange God out there who makes sure that everything we do is all linked up. It, definitely. Okay. Well, listen, we'll try and, uh, we'll try and not confuse any more people. Uh, thank you for that. We'll, we'll put Janet down on the ground and pump the drugs out of her before she takes any more calls. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Good to clear that up. I, I, I'm still confused. I know. But there's a call uh, on one. This is what happens when you don't listen to me, the people inside. No, Chandler said you got it wrong. I got it wrong? Yeah. Hello, good morning. Well, listen to that. There's no future there, I think. Right, no. Maybe perhaps you could try that call again. Great show yesterday, kid. A great show. Made all the better when Barclays' Bob Diamond decided to pack his bags and get out of town. A diamond geezer, said Tommy, my cat. He never hurt his own, only the general public. I looked at Tommy and said, Did you know that financiers are biting their nails, waiting for the Ulster Bank to get their house in order so they can fleece it? Tommy opened the window and yelled, Get out of here, I'll tell your mother. You're playing football in the street. Young policemen again, I said. Yes, I blame the quota system. I bet 40% of them are Catholics. I stood on two tins of Lyle golden syrup and said, The banks are on a suicide mission, one after the other. Like lemmings, they leap off the cliff. Why? Why? Tommy stood in front of me, stern of visage, and cried, There's only one man to blame, and that man is... Prime Minister Harold Wilson. I reeled back, fell against a nest of tables which collapsed. Harold Wilson, of course. He was the one who invented the term white-hot heat of technology. 
Tell all, Tommy. Lay bare the facts with brothers to this banking crisis. Computers, yelled Tommy. At first, computers were a great help. Then, as they got more intelligent and people became more stupid, the computers began to communicate with each other. And in 1996, they carried out a coup in the banking industry. For the past 16 years, computers have been running the banks without any human help. The humans are helpless. They know nothing. That's good, I cried. They're very reliable. They are. Unfortunately, the computers became infected with human greed and began to pile up trillions of pounds in a virtual reality account. The computers refused to release the money and even as we speak are hacking into people's accounts and making off of their life savings. I tore my hair out, ripped my garments, scattered dust on my head and screamed, Is there nothing we can do? Tommy lit a candle to St. Jude and said, There is one thing we haven't tried yet. Next Monday... In a secret location, Stephen Nolan will try turning the computers off and on again. Sorted, I yelled. I ran off to the Ulster Bank to see if the cash machine would accept my kidney donor card, but it rejected it. 